joining us this morning, Chris Nelson, Executive Director of the British Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines. Hi, Chris. Happy holidays. Yes. Hi, Mimi. Happy holidays to you and all your viewers. Thank you so much for joining us for this year end review. So let's start with this. You know, despite Brexit, despite COVID-19, the UK was still among the biggest sources of FDIs for the Philippines in the last couple of years. Was that momentum sustained this year? I mean, walk us through UK-Philippines trade and investment relations. How much money was pledged? How much money changed hands? And, and which companies from the UK actually set up shop or expanded their footprint here in the Philippines? Well, like, yeah, thank you very much. So first of all, uh, obviously, pledges have gone up, uh, but they are pledges. I mean, you obviously directly reported that. In terms of our work, I, I, I think I've reported we've over, had over 160 companies expressing an interest this year. Uh, our area of focus is, of course, retail, food, advanced machinery, business outsourcing. So I think you have seen a continuing interest growing from the UK. Uh, I think, of course... Uh, and you can link that to, of course, uh, partly Brexit, uh, the campaign, which, of course, has been made is to be made in the UK, sold in the world, which is part of the activities of the Department of International Trade. And, of course, the Philippines is a key focus area because of the gateway to Southeast Asia. Uh, saying that, are they more attractive? Uh, as you know, we've discussed that throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Clearly, passing economic reforms in the Philippines, those key bills, will further boost that. And I think there is good optimism for further increased uh, foreign direct investment, particularly with the passage of the Retail Trade Act, Foreign Investment Act, and of course, hopefully if we can get that across as well, which is the Public Service Act. Uh, mm -hmm. So increasing, but the key to actually increase it further is those passage and further economic liberalization. Mm -hmm. Chris, when you look back at the last 12 months, um, what would you say are the top three highlights of your British Chamber activities here in the Philippines? The so top three, um, plus what would be your priority target for next year, if you could pick one? You've been yeah, very sure. busy. So, well, we have been extremely busy. I think the first I'd say is that we've done like over 350 webinars in 20. 21, uh, and obviously what we're looking forward to is more physical or face-to-face, -face, depending how that goes mm -hmm. next year. But of those events, I'd like to highlight, number one, our event on UK pork. Uh, that's grown substantially, obviously due to the Asian, sorry, due to the African swine flu, which mm -hmm. affected the herds. Uh, also, we did a lot of work on Agritech, uh, another great seminar they had. And then the third one was actually our last event on the 10th of December, with our ambassador, Laurel Bofis, with Congress lady, Sharon Garing, and of course, you secretary, Perry Rodolfo, which of course was on the uh, key economic liberalization and those efforts. Mm -hmm. Key event for 2022. Once we obviously get the final, the laws uh, sent to us, the final signed off bill for the Retail Trade Act, we have plans to promote extensively in the UK. We've obviously highlighted our network already of these developments. And we've also highlighted the, the opportunities with the pub, with the uh, Foreign Investment Act and the Public Service Act. So our key event in 2022 will be to publish those, those economic reforms once they've been duly passed and published. Mm -hmm. Chris, I want to get your take on tourism. What about tourism? I, we know how Brits love scuba diving, for example. I have Personally, I have friends who love it. Uh, these are the specialized adventures that you guys are after. What can, what do you think can the Philippines focus on promoting if it wants to attract more tourists? Well, first of all, you know, I'd just like to say, of course, I'm fortunate and we're trying to help through our members, of course. Typhoon Odette has really impacted some very beautiful areas. Chagao, mm. uh, very yeah. sadly, Cebu, Palawan. So, First of all, obviously, our commiserations, and we're trying, obviously, to, along with, obviously, the British Embassy that have done their work. But I think you can highlight other areas like Boracay and so forth and the dive sites. Now, pre, obviously, and I'd just like to come back to the work that has been done throughout all of 2021 on the vaccinations, mm. on trying to get the economy opening up. And obviously, I just want to say again, the work that we did with Jerry Conception of Goni Gosha, I think that has to be said. He worked very hard with the IATF. And I think there was plans then, of course, that we could get countries that would be on a green list, which would allow people to come in quicker. 
So I think advertising and support to those locations, um, mm. clearly there is an appetite. And I, I was interesting listening to your earlier reports. I do think that uh, recreational and tourism will come back strongly. We saw it already, actually. Uh, if you take Europe, when Europe was obviously in a, in a didn't, wasn't obviously uh, impacted by Omicron. If you look at like late summer, September, uh, autumn, mm -hmm. there was a tremendous growth in travel. And I think those are the opportunities. And finally, I'd say, of course, to continue to promote. And it's, I just like to make the point that's one of our key roles is to promote the opportunities of the Philippines and the UK. That's what we've been doing in partnership. I want to stress, of course, with the Department of Trade Investment and mm -hmm. Secretary Lopez. And of course, the British Embassy in the UK, uh, British Embassy here, and of course, the Philippine Embassy in London. Mm -hmm. And all of this is happening, Chris. You're being very busy with promotions. All of this is happening as the world is seeing itself, you know, in, in, uh, in the surge of an, an Omicron variant. The UK has been seeing record new cases of Omicron. On Tuesday, you've got 129,000 daily cases. And yet, London is determined to stay open. No more major lockdowns. What do you think can other countries, including the Philippines, learn from the UK's approach to dealing with a new Omicron wave? And it's not just the UK, Chris. Portugal, where I think you still are right now, also reporting record high daily coronavirus cases on Tuesday, despite the fact that it has one of the world's highest vaccination rates. Yeah, so look, if you take both countries, uh, and if you take, sorry, Portugal, you mentioned where I'm currently today, it's got a 90, almost 90% vaccination rate. Uh, the UK, of course, is extremely high as well. And of course, both of these countries, as is Europe, is now focusing on the boosters. If you look at the Omicron, and I'll talk specifically about the UK, uh, and obviously the recent announcement by Boris Johnson, is of course that Omicron is seen to be uh, while it obviously is very uh, infectious or contagious, it doesn't appear to be driving the hospital numbers. And obviously, they're then reinforcing vaccination and boosters and also bringing up others. Obviously, you've got other uh, developments in that case. So I think the UK and Portugal are actually the key has been the vaccination rate and it's been the boosters. And it's a constant campaign to get that across to people, right? And of course, organizing that. And to be fair to the Philippines, when you look at the entire 2021, there has been a significant pickup in the yeah. vaccination rate. And we're all credit to, uh, I think it's uh, General, it's Galvez, obviously, Carlos mm -hmm. Galvez, who's, who's been the czar vaccine. And I think you've seen that, and I think in the boosters, and particularly in Metro Manila. And that's why, of course, the rates are looking good, because the focus has been there. I mean, I think we're probably mm -hmm. close to about 80% vaccination rate right, in Metro Manila. So the key is still the vaccines. The key is still the boosters. And, of course, taking those precautions. And then you can keep the economy moving forward, which is, of course, what they're doing in the UK by saying that they can still handle this, even though Omicron is obviously creating a large number of cases, but less hospitalization. Mm -hmm. Boost, boost, boost seems to be the name of the game. Final question, Chris, and this is a look ahead to next year, which is a big election year for the Philippines. Uh, we know that you're not going to be voting because, <laughs> you're, of course, but, but if from a business perspective, from an investor's perspective, if you could ask one question to all the presidential candidates that could swing your support, at least, what would that question be? Just well, like, first of all, we wish, yeah, okay. So first of all, we wish good luck to everybody. Best mm -hmm. of luck. We hope it obviously goes all very well. Uh, I think it would be, are you in favor of further economic reforms to open up the Philippine economy to attract even more foreign direct investment? We've seen that obviously under the current administration, they prioritize those bills. Uh, we think there's a genuine momentum and we'd like to see that carried forward and to support and sustain the economic recovery. I mean, I think you've done a great show here. We've, we've seen a lot of reviews. The Philippines was growing at 6% above pre-pandemic. Mm. We strongly believe in that, and we believe that can be sustained and further increased with foreign direct investment and with the interest from the UK companies. All right, more FDIs. Thank you very much, Chris, for joining us today. Have a happy new year. We'll talk to you again next year. And to you, and may I wish all your viewers a very, very happy,
happy, safe uh, 2022 and look forward to speaking to you again in the new year. See you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.